Hey my friends, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise, I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm here to bring you another name brand wig's best selling wig. This is Charlotte by Tressalure in the color Sunset Glow. I don't think I've ever reviewed this color. When I first started wearing wigs, I absolutely fell in love with Charlotte though. The price was right for me at the time because this is a more budget friendly synthetic and I found she was so cute with headbands. So if you wanna know more about this style, stick around and I will tell you all about her and I'll show you how I wear her with a headband. Name brand wigs sent me Charlotte so I could show all of you this really cute short style with a bit of a fun wave in the back. If you want to check her out, I will put a link in the description below as well as a 30% off coupon code, which brings this the price of this piece down as of December 2023 to $104.30. So a great price for a high quality major name brand synthetic. Let's take a look at Charlotte from all sides. Let's appreciate the fun curl in the back. So kind of straight in the front and curly in the back makes this a really unique style that's really not like any other wigs that I can think of on the market right now. And if Sunset Glow is not the color for you, Charlotte comes in something like 26 other colors, so you definitely have a lot of color variety in this style. Charlotte has a basic cap, which is what helps to keep that price point down. I think her retail price is about $149, so again, that 30% off coupon code puts this at just above $100, and for a short synthetic wig like this made by Tressler who has great fibers this wig is going to last a really long time so I do think you're going to get your money's worth out of this if you can do a basic cap wig let's take a look at that cap so if you're from not familiar brand new to wigs this is what's considered either a basic cap or a machine made cap uh, it can be called both. So all of this is permatease on the top. I will tell you about the permatease in a moment. We've got soft ear tabs with a lot of hair sewn in on them, which gives it a lot of fullness at the side and really good coverage. No extended nape, Velcro adjusters. The rest is open wefted. This is a pretty lightweight wig with just... I don't know if I would call it a little bit of permatease, but I think between the lower density that this piece has and all of that open wefting, I do find Charlotte to be a relatively cool wig. And I'll tell you guys, like I said in the beginning, this style was actually one of my favorites in early in my wig wearing when I was trying all kinds of different styles, trying to save money because I was buying so many wigs to try to figure out what would work for me. So when I would find this piece on sale, in addition to the lower price point, and five years ago it was lower than it is today, I don't remember what it was, but it wasn't as much as it is today, I would buy it up. So I had this one in multiple colors. And for those of you who are bang wearers, Charlotte is a great piece to cut bangs into. So if you take Right now, the fringe is too long to be a bang, probably on most people. The measurements say that the fringe is six and a half inches, probably just a little bit shorter than that on me, but not by much. I am about eight inches down to my chin. And so you can see when I pull the bangs forward, that's what it looks like. I have a video showing you how to take a thinning razor to trim up bangs that are too long for you, but sort of already are shorter than the rest of the hair. It's really, really easy to do. And you don't have to worry about over cutting or cutting really blunt lines like you might with a straight scissors. I'll make sure that video is linked in the de description below. Cause I know sometimes we have to make these wigs our own but in the beginning, we may not even know where to begin. So I have a lot of Tip Tuesday videos showing you how to do different things like pluck the part line, put makeup on a lace front that's too dark for you, root a wig with furniture markers, which you can actually do with this one. We'll talk about color in a little bit, but it doesn't have a root or any low lights. And for some people, just adding a little bit of that makes 
a color perfect. So I'll make sure that trimming video is linked below. All right, let's talk about permatease because I know that is a big deal to a lot of wig wearers, especially when you're new to wig wearing and are overwhelmed by hair a lot. This wig has a fair amount of permatease. All up here, I can feel the poofy permatease. Not so much on the sides and not so much back here. But on the very top, we have a fair amount of permatease. I also think that in some lighting, it might be a little bit visible at the part line. Let me kind of show you this one. It's going to depend on the piece. I do think that they've done a really good job with making this lifted up here so that you really can't see a lot of that permatease. But just be aware, on basic cap wigs like this one, sometimes the permatease is visible. I would say that's more common in lighter colors that don't have any rooting. Darker colors, rooted colors, those tend to create that shadow effect that really hides the permatease. I don't think this one is bad at all, but my goal always is to give you all the information so you can make the best purchasing decision for you and try to avoid returns, can, which can be costly when a company has a restocking fee, which most wig companies do. So that's why I give you this information. I loved Charlotte, like I said, so that isn't something that bothered me to the point where I couldn't wear the wig, but you should know everything. Don't you think? And speaking of permatease, if you do wind up with a basic cap wig and you can see a little bit of that permatease and it bothers you, styling it up with headbands uh, can be a real lifesaver because, let's just give this a shot here, I like to pull some of that hair back so I can stick the headband in front of it and then poof it out. That's my preference. When you put a headband on like this, any visible permatees that may be on that part line is disguised by the headband. In addition, headbands can help you make the transition to wigs just a little bit easier, especially if you've been losing your hair for a long time and every wig you put on looks wiggy because it looks like too much hair. A headband really helps to flatten that out and also it's just a normal way of styling hair and I think sometimes we don't realize we can style our wigs just like we would style our bio hair. A regular synthetic like this you can't take heat to it unless it's steam heat like a clothing steamer but you can use accessories and that will help you a ton especially in the beginning of your journey. And let's face it how cute is this? Now you can go ahead and tuck the hair behind your ears if you want to get a little bit less hair in the front you're not going to get, you're not going to lift all of the hair up off the front because this doesn't have a lace front. But like I said, if you can wear bangs, you can cut a full bang into this one. These like to sort of fling into my face periodically. I have found with wigs like this, just playing with them and constantly training those the hair to go to the side can help a lot. The heat of your hands and just repetition will help with that. I never really had a lot of issues with my other Charlotte, so I don't think that this one is going to be a long-term issue. And again, if you like bangs, trim them up and then it's a non-issue. Alright, let's talk about fit. I think Tressler wigs run really true to average. I have a 21 and a quarter circumference and I do cinch my Tressler wigs in and I usually wear a wig grip with them as well. Typically I get some extra cap on the top. I think this one's running just a little bit small and I have found that in some of the other Charlotte wigs. Here's what you need to know as a wig wear or a potential wig wear. Cap size can vary depending on the cap construction. Sometimes I find Basic cap wigs can run a little smaller than wigs with lace fronts and monofilament. It will depend brand, it will vary, I should say, brand to brand, but if you're used to wearing a certain cap type, don't assume that if you get a different type of cap that it's going to fit you the same. I did cinch this one in, but I'm really not getting a lot of extra cap on the top, and as far as coverage on the sides, these ear tabs go a little bit higher than I like them, but pretty much in the place that I like them for the best coverage for me. So look at my measurements below. If your measurements are a lot bigger than mine over the top of your head, I'm not sure that I'm getting a lot of extra cap up there on this one, and you might run into trouble with coverage issues on the side if this is a lot bigger than mine. So what can you do about that? 
just stick with a color that's closest to your bio hair if you have some because if it ends up showing you can see my bio hair doesn't blend with this one so if my bio hair shows or I want to blend it then I have to use root touch up powder to really change that color so that's where you want to be concerned is if you're gonna buy colors dramatically different than your bio hair that you want the best coverage that you can get all right let's talk about color sunset glow the way that this color is described let's take a look at it up close we've got um, auburn which is a number 33 I love that they've given the numbers in this description a bright red which is a 32 this is absolutely a red and strawberry swirl highlights they're calling it and you can really kind of see those highlights up front here I think the picture on the website really shows those highlights great so this is what I would call a red a bright red not fire engine red more of an orange red and then we've got these highlights all throughout look at the tonal differences here lots of tone changes so if you love kind of the orangey red colors, you're not looking for dark red, dark auburn, you're looking for something really dynamic and bright, this Sunset Glow could be the color for you. It's so fun. And again, for me personally, I would probably add a little rooting to this one and some lowlights just to darken it up slightly. So there's absolutely something you can do when it comes to synthetic wigs. It's hard to lighten them. You really can't lighten them with markers, but you can add low lights and darken them. All right, let's get outside so you can see this color outside. Please let me know if you have any questions. And thank you, Name Brand Wigs, for giving me the chance to show Charlotte in this color. Please check them out next time you're in the market for a synthetic wig. Talk to you guys in my next video. Okay friends, let's look at sunset glow out here. I should have put my sunglasses on. The sun is like right there. And so when I'm looking at you guys, I'm looking straight into the sun. See my wild man running around here? He's eight months old and I think he's about 70 some pounds already. Oh, so hard to look up there. Okay, let's see if I can get you guys close up. Hopefully this is picking up some of those highlights. All right, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Hey friends, thanks so much for watching. Here are a few videos I think you might enjoy. Go ahead and click on one and watch.